young, unseasoned, untested. Just a few words used in the preseason to describe the 2007 West Virginia University basketball team. But youth is a wonderful thing, and it's full of surprises. Pleasant surprises are just what this young Mountaineer basketball team delivered in 2007. With little expected of them, this team came out of the shadows of past West Virginia basketball teams to create its own identity. They emerged as winners, eager to take on the grueling challenges of a college basketball season. Game after game, they delivered, much to the delight of the Mountaineer Nation. They hustled and outworked their opponents. Young at heart, but savvy at the game of basketball, the 2007 Mountaineers brought a championship to Morgantown and became West Virginia's Young Champions. The story of the 2007 West Virginia University basketball team is presented by United Bank. Plenty of questions surrounded the 2007 West Virginia basketball team. After success of Elite Eight and Sweet 16 NCAA finishes the previous two years, 83% of the offense was gone, and Coach John Beeline began his fifth season in a rebuilding mode. Two seniors, Frank Young and Rob Summers, brought veteran leadership to the squad. Joining those two in the front court would be junior Jamie Smalligan, sophomore Joe Alexander, and freshman Deshaun Butler and Wellington Smith. In the backcourt, junior Darris Nichols was game tested and was joined by sophomores Alex Ruoff and Ted Talkington, along with freshman Joe Mazzula and Devin Ballwinkle. Yes, it was a young team, but it didn't take the Mountaineers long to answer those early season question marks. In the first month of the season, West Virginia established itself as a team full of talent that not only would win in the future, but win in the present. In the opening two weeks, West Virginia started with three straight wins before heading to Disney World for the Old Spice Classic. Victories over experienced Montana and Western Michigan squads propelled WVU into the championship game. Alley drive, left side, all the way to the basket, kisses it off the glass. Pitches it out to Smolligan. He'll launch a hierarchy three switch. Jamie Smolligan. And a steal by Ruoff. Down the floor to Alexander. Here comes Showtime. Layup shot. It's good. The West Virginia University Mountaineers will advance to the championship game. In the title game against Arkansas, the Razorbacks held off a WVU rally and prevailed. But the Mountaineers returned home to start December with a surprising and impressive 5-1 record. Without really realizing it, we had all of a sudden become a good team. And we were just doing what we all expected of ourselves during the offseason. And it was kind of like all the critics and all the criticism about our team, just it, it didn't even matter. You know, we were just doing what we knew we could do. Yeah, after last season, uh, you know, a lot of us sat down. You know, me, Darius, and Frank, and Alan, and Joe, and we just said, you know, it was our time to come out and shine next year. You know, a lot of people, you know, especially people on campus were just talking about how it was going to be a rebuilding year. And, you know, it being me and Frank's last year, we weren't going to let that happen. People didn't think we was going to be, you know, any good at all. But, you know, it's kind of it's frustrating, you know, especially hearing it from, you know, people who go to school and, you know, just everywhere around the country. And then... You know, it's, I think we just took that as motivation to to work hard during the summer. You know, go out, prove people wrong, just play hard, and you know, show everybody how good we can be, and that this wasn't a rebuilding year, and that we was we still had a good chance to be good this year. But it wasn't going to be easy. We're going to have to work hard. We're going to hurt. You know, we're going to have to sacrifice a lot of things. But we did that, and that's why we were so ses successful this year. Non-conference action continued in early December with a visit from the Wolfpack of North Carolina State to the Charleston Civic Center. On to the right side, Young for a three. Got it, Frank Young's first points of the night. Devin throws it left elbow to Summers, hands the ball back to Bowenkle, he squares for a shot, he hits a three. Boy, he can shoot it. Butler's chasing McCauley down the floor, he lays it up and scores two. Young gonna hoist up a three. Yes, Frankie Young. Strong start, second half. He has eight. Mountaineers lead by six. Sends the ball all the way through. Left corner, here's Horner for a three. Got it, we're tied at 40. 
West Virginia broke open a tight game in the second half with a 10-0 run to down the ACC opponent as four players hit for double figures. The win put the wheels in motion as the Mountaineers reeled off eight straight victories and earned a spot in the national rankings. In that eight-game winning streak were three Big East wins to close out December and start the new year off on the winning track. The 12th-ranked Connecticut Huskies came to Morgantown on December 30th in the Big East opener for both schools. I've probably never been more nervous before in my life. That was, that was, our, that was our first big game. Alex looking, pops out to Alexander for a three. Yes! Here's Marcus Johnson, back slap ball. In the backcourt, stolen in the frontcourt by Butler. Butler drives, Butler shoots, Butler scores! And Butler did it! Bowwinkle to throw in. Curling off is Frank Young on the right wing. He'll try the three, it's up. Go! Frank Young hit a three! UConn's had success in Morgantown before, but on this day, the Coliseum magic worked its wonders. Alexander driving down the baseline, goes up, slam dunk down the baseline! Here comes Rua in the front court. Four on three. Butler layup good. Oh, now look pass by Alex Rua to Deshaun Butler. He has a career high 16. West Virginia's biggest lead of the game. Frank Young led all scorers with 22 points as more than 12,000 fans witnessed this young team's coming of age. The Mountaineers were 11 and one and started Big East play with an all-important home win. The UConn game was a really pivotal game, actually, because what I got the sense of was that we were another West Virginia team doing what West Virginia teams do, which is be the underdogs and beat big-name teams and ranked teams. So the fact that we beat a 12th-ranked team that has UConn on their chest really gave us a sense of pride that we're just the next guys in line to do what West Virginia's been doing for a couple of years, which is be underdogs and beat big teams. And that gave us a lot of confidence. The momentum continued into the new year with two more Big East home wins. Against Villanova, Frank Young hit a school record eight threes and a 23-4 run gave the Mountaineers a commanding lead early against the Wildcats. Harris takes the ball out high, gets a screen from Smalligan, hands the ball over to Frank Young with three on the clock, a long three up, in! Oh, how do you like Frank Young early? That's three three-pointers for the senior. Here's Alex driving all the way to the basket, flakes the ball in the corner, and Young for another three. He hit another one! Nichols fakes the three, penetrates in the lane, back to Young, left corner, three ball, yes! When Villanova made a run in the second half, it was Young again with a three-point shot that secured WVU's 400th victory all time in the Coliseum. Goodness gracious, thank you, thank you, thank you. WVU extended its winning streak to eight games with a 73-46 victory over St. John's. High post pass to Rob Summers, hands the ball over to Alex Ruoff. He'll stop, he'll pop three, got it. Far sideline taken by Alexander, backdoor cut. There it is to Darius Nichols. He heads into the lane, throws up a fake shot. Gobbled by Alexander, here comes Joe in a three on one. Alexander driving, Alexander bounced to Nichols, layup good, a new career high. With Darius Nichols leading the way, West Virginia broke open a close game by scoring 12 unanswered points. The Mountaineers stood at 13-1 and 3-0 and in Big East play. Many were surprised by their 21st place ranking, but this young team deserved it. I definitely never expect to be ranked, you know, this year, you know, as everybody said it was a rebuilding year, but, you know, we don't want to look at it as, as a rebuilding year, but I never would have thought we would have been ranked, you know, especially that early in the season with, with the young guys we had. West Virginia closed January with a 4-3 record in their next seven games. An on-conference win over Marshall saw Frank Young light up the Nets for 25 points. Here's Frank Young, long three up in. Frank Young with his 16th point. Here's Darius Nichols, line drive down the lane, layup, good, and a foul. Frank penetrates, fires the ball to Smalligan, in the corner, Ruoff for One a time, three. Baby. Yes! yes! Alexander Ruoff hits the three. West Virginia leads by 10. And the Chesapeake Capital Classic belongs to the West Virginia University Mountaineers. Conference wins in January included South Florida, as the Mountaineers committed only five turnovers for the entire game. Alexander near sideline, bounces the ball, Ruoff fires, wide open, right side, three for Young, it's up, it's good! And West Virginia leads by 10. Down the other end we go, here's Alexander, baseline drive, slam, dunk over McHugh Ellis! Can you believe that one? He put it right 
in the face of the nation's number five shot blocker. Next was a 12-point win over DePaul, behind a career-high 23 points from Joe Alexander. The Blue Demons were the last of the five new Big East teams to visit the Coliseum, and all five lost on their initial visit. Top circle taken by Ruoff, fires ball underneath, Young reverse layup, backdoor cut, good for Frank Young. Here comes Joe Alexander, lead pass up the floor, Butler back to Alexander. Alexander lays it up, through to the ball! Joe Alexander has taken over this basketball game. Halfway through this, the you know the Big East schedule, we were hearing a lot about not having a Big East road win. You know, a lot of people on TV, commentators talking about not having a Big East road win. So it's kind of it started haunting us a little bit. Uh, we got to prove that we can win on the road in the Big East because that was really our next big test after uh, proving that we could first off beat Big East teams at home, and uh, so that was the next big test was that we could win on the road, and, and we were really motivated to show that we could do that. Butler out to Ruoff, long three for Alex. He switched to Alex Ruoff, deep territory. Fires the top circle to Nichols, holds, and three is up, and it's in, and West Virginia leads. Five players scored in double figures as West Virginia headed into February with a 17-4 record. February started off with a second straight Big East road win as the Mountaineers down Seton Hall 81-70 behind a career-high 21 points from Jersey native Deshaun Butler. Butler made the most of his home trips to Jersey, scoring 38 points combined in back-to-back -back games against Rutgers and Seton Hall. The two straight road wins were important but it was the final non-conference game that gave West Virginia its signature win of the season. On February 10th, the second-ranked UCLA Bruins came to Morgantown, and a sold-out gold clad Coliseum crowd was waiting for them. I actually have a picture on my cell phone. I drove up here at midnight and took a picture of the Coliseum with all our students sleeping in, in tents and sleeping bags outside. I said before, you I've never been more nervous before for UConn. Well, I was almost twice as nervous for the UCLA, big time program, besides the fact they were ranked so high. I mean, it was hard to sleep that night because I you know, of course, you know, they're, they're ranked number two in the country. You know, it's a, uh, a big time tradition with the school and, you know, national television, CBS, so. There's just a lot of things going through my mind, uh, just trying to get a big upset in front of a great crowd. You know, we had a sold-out crowd. It was loud, man. You couldn't even hear yourself think at times. And you know, it was just a great atmosphere to play in. The Mountaineers defeated the Bruins the year before at Pauley Pavilion and were looking for an unprecedented sweep in the two-game series. But most of the WVU players that handed the vaunted Bruins their last home loss to date were long gone. And the 2007 Mountaineers were on their own against the Bruins. Against that one, three, one zone, lost the ball, stolen by Ruoff, ahead. Here's Alexander driving down the other end, and he slam-dunks the ball. Out hard front to Ruoff, now backdoor cut, small again, got inside of Mott, and he slam-dunks the ball. We just said we want to out-hustle them to, to win this game, and, you know, we really set the tone early. I think Joe really set the tone early when, you know, he made a hard box out on uh, one of their players and just let them know that this was going to be a tough physical game for 40 minutes, and that's what we made it out to win. Darius sends it over to Ruoff, long three, up, in! It's Ruoff with a three. On the other end, here's Butler. Right side, three-pointer. It's good! A quick opening for Deshaun Butler. And Joe will give the ball to Ruoff up top. He's open for a three straight away. Yes! Alex Ruoff drains the three from out front. Back to Ruoff, back to Butler. Butler, tightly guarded, spins, drives for the basket, layup. It's good! And a foul! The young Mountaineers performed like champions and built a 19-point second-half lead behind inspired play 
and contributions off the bench from Butler and Ted Talkington. Nichols has it, driving down the lane. Nichols sends it back to Talkington. Yes! We pride ourselves on being a gritty team, a team that's, you know, going to be down for loose balls and a team that's just going to outwork people. And that day, you know, we just, you know, just dedicated ourselves to going out there and just down for loose balls and, you know, just getting all 50 50 so. A beautiful play. Lead pass down the floor. Ruoff driving to the basket. Layup shot is good. It'll foul. Alex Ruoff's 18 points led the way in front of a CBS national television audience as the 70-65 upset of the nation's second-ranked team continued to prove that the Coliseum was one magical place for the Mountaineers. I've told you this before, you make us all proud. We're very, very proud of you. You make West Virginia shine, and thank you. Thank you. Great game. Yeah. I probably wasn't doing much thinking, jumping them down the court like a little kid. But once I got back in the locker room and actually had time to just sit and think about what we just accomplished and that I was actually a part of it, it was you know, just a dream come true. That's, that's stuff you dream about when you're working out extra in high school, trying to get to college. It was one of the greatest feelings I mean, you could ever have, to be, to be up on UCLA by that much and just and just be killing them. It's not like we were just making every shot. We were just playing good basketball, and we were, we were bodying them up on the boards, and, and we were just playing good. And, and it felt good to just kind of be beaten up on a team that's that good and, and that famous. UCLA was the highest ranked team defeated by West Virginia since number one ranked UNLV in 1983. The win shocked the college basketball world and gave John Beeline's Mountaineers 17 victories over ranked teams in the past five seasons. Overall, the history book shows that West Virginia stands 3-1 and one all time against UCLA. I was so excited, like, I didn't even realize it. I mean, I was jumping up and down, and my heart was pumping. I mean, it was pretty nice. It was like the, the best game I think I've ever been a part of. You know, we just put it all on the line, and as you see, you know, all the, all the loose balls and the hustle plays and won the game for us. That was a great feeling. You know, uh, I was just so happy. I, I mean, I, it's hard to put it into words to, to beat a team like that on your home floor. While the UCLA victory was WVU's signature win of the season, there was still more work to do. Five games were left before the all-important Big East tournament. The Mountaineers turned in a two and three record down the stretch. Wins came against Seton Hall, giving West Virginia three straight 20 win seasons. Harvey out front, ball stolen by Frank Young. Frank's driving the other end of the floor. Right side, layup, scoop shot, good, Frank Young. Four on the shot clock. Summers makes a steal. In the front court to Young. Frank goes in, and he dunks the ball with one hand from the right side. And an emotional pregame senior ceremony sparked West Virginia to a 14-point victory over Cincinnati. Picks the ball back out to Alexander. Another jumper is up. It's in for three. Now here's Ruoff, he'll try it right side, three, it's in! Here's Butler for a quick release, three, yes! Now to Missoula, straightaway three, off the top, it's good, he banked it in. Butler drops the ball inside, Summers layup, good, nice pass, pushing it ahead. Nichols to the top of the circle on the other end of the floor to Smolligan, he'll try the three, it's in the air, bouncing around in! The Cincinnati win gave the Mountaineers a 9-7 record in the Big East and marked the second straight winning season in conference play. Alex Ruoff poured in a game-high 23 points as the seventh sellout of the season in the Coliseum thanked this young club for its character, hustle, and perseverance. The regular season was over, and in the first round of the Big East tournament, the Mountaineers would face Providence. The Friars had handed WVU a bitter defeat earlier in the season. And it was payback time in the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. We really felt like Providence kind of snuck away with a victory at their place. And even though we didn't play well, we still almost beat them. So we were psyched to play them again, not just because we felt like we could win, but because we wanted to crush them. Friars turn it over. Now Bears can take the lead, and they do, as Alexander slams it home. Ruoff for three. Ruoff gets a screen from Summers, fires it to Darius, NBA three, in! In what proved to be an easy win for West Virginia, the Mountaineers hit for a Big East tournament record 17 three-point shots. 
The veteran leadership of Frank Young came through to lead the way with 21 points. Alex Ruoff found the garden nets to his liking as he also finished with 21 points. The Mountaineers accomplished their first mission to the tune of 92 to 79. Next up was Rick Pitino and his Louisville Cardinals. This one would prove to be a classic Big East battle. They've got numbers. Williams in the open court. Ruoff penetrates back in the right corner. Butler for a three. Yes! The Cardinals took the early lead and built a 17-point second-half advantage before the Mountaineers answered back with an 18-0 run to ignite the Garden crowd. Butler takes the ball in the paint, gets it underneath the Rob Summers layup. Good in West Virginia. Now closes to within seven. Here's a three up by Scott No. Rebound Alexander. Joe fires it down the floor to Ruoff. Going in for the layup. It's up and it is no good. Smolligan follows it with a dunk. Smolligan followed it in with a rip roar and dunk. And West Virginia's down one. Quick return back to Nichols. Nichols gets a screen from Smolligan. Driving all the way for the shot. It's up. It's good. Four seconds to play. West Virginia leads by two. Back comes Sosa. Sosa over midcourt. Driving the ball to the lane. Layup shot. It's up and it is good at the horn. And the game will go to overtime, tied at 58 apiece. Regulation was not enough, and it took two overtimes to settle this epic battle. Time's running out here. It's going to be Williams. It's going to be Williams. And we've got double overtime. The young Mountaineers simply ran out of gas in the second overtime. But they still played one great basketball game. After being denied a bid to the NCAA tournament, West Virginia was selected as a number one seed in the NIT. The postseason experience was going to be crucial for this young team, but it quickly became apparent that the Mountaineers were only going to go as far as senior Frank Young carried them. He was the veteran leader. He was the spark. He made things click, and he put this young team on his back. Everybody just got along together. And the that's what made us uh, made it so easy for us to play so well for each other because you know you want to do well for your teammate, you want to do well for your friend. Honestly, Frank's been like an older brother since I've been here. I I don't think I would have been able to start this year and do what I've done if Frank hadn't been here. Uh, I just love him. I mean, he's one of my best friends on the team. You know, he, him and Darius have been here for me my, all three years, and you know, he just helped us out so much. You know, such a great guy and a guy that you can count on. Uh, you know, always be there with you no matter what. And, you know, there's so many good things I can say about him as a person. To be a leader like Frank was for us and to help out the team that much, aside from scoring, uh, that's just tremendous. That's, that's something I hope to reach one day. This is makes me feel real good inside, just to know that you know, I had some kind of impact on these players. To me, we're, we're more than teammates, we're, we're family. And, you know, it was just good to, uh, to, to, to hear, that, hear that from them. First up in game one of the NIT was Delaware State. As a number one seed, West Virginia was assured of playing at the Coliseum for the first three rounds, which meant trouble for visiting teams. The Mountaineers turned it a 32-2 record versus non-conference opponents in the building during the last five years. Frank Young scored 17 points. Alex Ruoff added 14 points and nine assists while Jamie Smulligan contributed 13 points off the bench in WVU's 24-point victory. In the NIT second round, the UMass Minutemen invaded the Coliseum with their up-tempo style of play. UMass had won 24 games coming into the contest, but Frank Young wasn't ready to turn in his jersey just yet. In the left corner, Alexander spins down the baseline, fires the ball to Ruoff, out front to Young for a three, yes! Great ball movement, Tony. Everybody touches early, that's good. Summers high post. Backdoor cut, Alexander, reverse layup, yes! And they're gonna call a timeout. Both teams shot at a blistering pace, and the game proved that not only can West Virginia beat you with its defense, but also with its high-powered offense. Led by Frank Young's career-high 31 points, the Mountaineers scored a 90-77 victory to advance to the NIT quarterfinals. One game was left to make it back to the Garden. If the Mountaineers were to return to New York, 
they would have to beat the North Carolina State Wolfpack for a second time this season. The Wolfpack were playing their best basketball of the year, and the stage was set for another classic at the Coliseum. West Virginia jumped ahead early, only to see North Carolina State bounce back to take a four-point lead. In the final minutes, it was West Virginia that hit the crucial outside shots. Middle of the floor to Ruoff, he spins, gets the ball on the right wing. Young, tough three, up and banks it in off the right side. 22 for Frank Young. It's in! He switched it! Once again, it was Frank Young leading the way with 25 points, followed by Ruoff with 15 points and 11 assists as the Mountaineers were heading back to New York for the NIT semifinals. They reached their goal of getting back to the Garden. Now their sights were set on an NIT championship. You know, the captains just pulled the team together and we just said, you know, we're in, we're in the NIT, so now we, might, we should be in it to win it now. And we might as well just, you know, try to uh, extend our season as far as it could possibly go. That was our, our main goal, you know, if we're going to be in the NIT, you know, we're going to win it. We just went out and played hard every game. And like it was our last one because it, it could have been our potential last one. So everybody just played extra hard just knowing that, you know, we wanted to keep playing together for one extra game. And, you know, we get a, did a good job of extending that season as far as it could go. Perhaps a second trip to New York in three weeks and playing two Big East tournament games in the Garden was a slight advantage for West Virginia. One thing was for certain. The Mountaineers needed any advantage they could get against SEC opponent Mississippi State in the semis. The Bulldogs were fast, tall, and athletic, and adjusted to West Virginia's style of play. Mississippi State used a 12-2 run early in the second half to build a 14-point lead. But they had no answer for West Virginia's heart. Senior center Rob Summers provided key inside play and his hustle and dirty work provided nine huge rebounds to keep the Mountaineers in the game. West Virginia erased a 14-point deficit to set up some last-minute heroics. Having lost in double overtime three weeks before in the Garden, the Mountaineers had had enough of overtime and went for the win. Butler and Nichols to the left of the lane. Ruoff gets the ball in his hands. Here we go, inbounds comes to Nichols. Nichols shoots for the lead, it's up, it's in! At the buzzer, Dallas Nichols wins the game from the left corner. He hit the three-point shot in the corner. It's up, it's good, and it's a mass hysteria here at Madison Square Garden. In the huddle, you know, I knew that, you know, we were going to get a last shot, and I was just hoping that somebody was going to hit it. I mean, I knew it was going to go either Frank or Darius. Once we broke the huddle, Darius and I kind of waved at each other and said uh, to try to you know, play it off, and that, that's uh, his head, his man turned his head just long enough so he could get open and was able to hit the shot. I kind of knew they was going to key on Frank, so I was like, hey, Frank, let's act like we're going to cross, and I think that kind of kind of confused him a little bit and made him pay attention to, you know, if we were to cross, and I think that definitely helped to play out and threw them all. I saw the tape later and saw Darius do that little fake, and that was just, that's impressive. That's instinct. That has nothing to do with the play. When you hear buzzer beaters like that, you know you you know you gotta you gotta come out and win the championship there. We talked amongst ourselves in the huddle, in the in the locker room before the game, and it was like we're here now. We might as well go ahead and win it all. We were on a high there after that win. Um, we you know we came so far, and you know with the seniors Frank and Rob and how much they did, it's just it was you know we wanted it real bad. The championship game pitted West Virginia against Clemson. The Tigers started the season at 17-0, but on this night, they faced a determined West Virginia squad. Ruoff driving down the other end of the floor, gives the ball to Frank Young. Another NBA three is up in! Oh Frank my. Young! Now wide open right side wing. Here's Smulligan three. Bingo. Yes! Jamie Smulligan buries the three. Butler will try the three. He left it in for three! Properly served by the Butler. West Virginia built a 12-point halftime lead and expanded it to 17 in the second half by shooting 60% from three-point land. Middle of the floor taken by Ruoff, spins right side. Nichols open for three, right corner, yes! Oh my goodness, and they win the game! High post pass to Summers, backdoor cut. Here's Butler, floats the ball right side, up to Young for a wide open three. He hit another one! Coming as no surprise, 
Frank Young's 24 points paced the victory and was accompanied by a cool 20 points from freshman Deshaun Butler. The West Virginia Mountaineers were the 2007 champions of the NIT. You know, I, th I think it means a lot, you know, since the team from West Virginia hasn't done it since 1942. That shows, you know, how hard it is to do, but at the same time, I, I really don't think it's, it's sunken into our heads yet. You know, I, I think it might not sink in until we're, we're old, so until we look back on it. It was a great feeling, you know, just going out there and winning a championship. And just in my, in my last college game, when I win, you know, not too many people do that. You know, just you know, to win and just having that, the title of being a champion. What a remarkable ride for this young team. From what was believed to be a rebuilding year at the start to 27 wins and an NIT championship, these young Mountaineers accomplished many things along the way. Five different Mountaineers had at least one 20-point scoring game, and the team set a school record for three-pointers made in a season with a Big East leading 371. The 2007 Mountaineers were also an unselfish bunch with a school record 633 assists dished out, and their 27 wins were the second most ever in school history. Frank Young was a senior leader in the truest sense. He was the team MVP and set the school record for threes made in a season with 117. He finished fourth on the school's all-time three-point list for a career and was WVU's fifth first-team All-Big East selection ever. Deservedly so, Young was named MVP of the NIT, averaging 24 points per game. Darris Nichols was also selected to the NIT All-Tournament team. And Deshaun Butler was WVU's third selection ever to the Big East All-Rookie Team. Nichols and Alex Ruoff finished 1-2 in the Big East in assist-to-turnover ratio as the two simply took care of the basketball. 2007 marked the fourth straight postseason appearance for West Virginia, and the 9-7 Big East record was the Mountaineers' second straight winning season in the nation's best basketball conference. West Virginia basketball has averaged almost 24 wins per season in the last three years. And let's not forget about the place the Mountaineers call home. Quite simply, visiting teams do not want to play in the Coliseum. Posting a 17-1 record in the building in 2007 with seven sellout crowds, West Virginia is 30-3 during the last two years at home with 15 sellouts. And finally, the 2007 Mountaineers continue the rich tradition of West Virginia basketball. The 27 wins and NIT championship provide the perfect transition for new coach Bob Huggins. The sixth active winningest coach in college basketball, Huggins returned home to his alma mater and hometown of Morgantown in April of 2007 to lead the Mountaineers into what promises to be a bright future. I think Coach Huggins said it best when he came here and told us, I'm going to work with you guys and help you guys get better, but you're already winners. So that really speaks a lot about what winning the NIT means. It means that we know how to win, that we know how to compete, because winning games is one thing, but winning championships and uh, getting wins in, in tournaments, that's another thing, and it takes, it takes a lot of mental focus to get that done. So it basically just says that, that we're winners and we know how to win, and that's good because I think we can build on that and, um, and win big games in the future. From what was supposed to be a rebuilding project to 27 wins and an NIT championship, the 2007 West Virginia basketball season will go down as one of the school's best. A group of young men mixed with two quality senior leaders brought this team out from the shadows of the past two Mountaineer basketball teams to make their own mark. Mountaineer fans will remember them for their youthful smiles and their composure in tough situations. They will be remembered for their hustle their character and their unassuming nature, which was just enough to make them fearless. When this group won the NIT championship, they won it for West Virginia University and Mountaineer fans everywhere. Yes, it was a surprise ending, but fans learned very early in the season not to doubt this team. They could play the game of basketball, and these young champions let the entire nation know about it. The story of the 2007 West Virginia University basketball team has been presented by United Bank.
MSN, the Mountaineers Sports Network.